My name is Jared Duvall, and we're in Lebanon, New Hampshire. The group I started two years ago in my junior year in high school, Students for a Sustainable Future. When we started, our main goal is to get a recycling program going in the school because we didn't have one. But our main focus over the past year has been um, this local conservation campaign trying to uh, make sure that a supermarket isn't built, uh, built on wetlands across from our school. What started out as sort of a, really a group of people with really diverse ideas about um, what kind of steps the group should take on environmental issues. He really just sort of brought everyone together and really just kept people committed with his enthusiasm to keep going to those meetings. It's really empowering because I see this eight acres of wetlands and forests and know in a sense that it wouldn't be here um, if it wasn't for the efforts of the group that I started. I'm very nervous that there's going to be a vacuum now that he's left. You know, is there going to be another young person to step up and fill his shoes and keep the enthusiasm and the interest in the environment going. It's a really unique young man that comes through and can get so much excitement. But so an award like this makes so much sense to me. He is driven by passion. He cares a lot about caring. Another factor that I think is a big part of who Jared is is that his, he grew up in a family where activism is valued. We um, were looking for a book that would um, introduce young people to the environmental movement. I read a book called Believe in Cassandra. It dealt with issues of sustainability, limits to growth, how we're using up our natural resources faster than they can recover. And it basically just said that we need to understand the limits to human growth and development regarding how we affect the earth. Um, it just can't keep happening at this rate. Um, it's mathematically impossible and naturally impossible. It's that problem today with aspects of free trade and globalization that doesn't take into account the value of community, that doesn't take into account the environment. I mean, our, our economic system is so Cartesian and just so set that you can't really apply a value to the environment. And so when it gets degraded and destroyed, it's not put into their equations about what kind of profit they're making. They may be making a lot of profit, but for the majority of people that free trade affects, their quality of life is going down. And I think that that is a huge campaign that the environmental community is very much a part of. The work that he did on the planning board, I mean, to sit there and watch this kid get up there and speak, you know, to a whole room full of people and know that he had done more research than all of the people on that board put together. I mean, he was, he was quoting passages from the, the, the bylaws and the amount of time and, uh, and effort that he had put into all of that um, just made me go, wow. I mean, it, you know, I was tremendously proud. All it takes, basically, is an impassioned, informed voice. And it's really that simple. Um, because when you know what you're talking about and when it comes from the heart, people want to listen to hear what you have to say.